Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah, and Trump did Trump did bring that up in his, uh, about restaurants, you know, as, as much of a, a tyrant as Trump is, he is, I think he is generally concerned about stuff, so. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, do you okay. guys want to, what, what kind of job do you all think Trump is doing? Do, should we get a thing? Let's start with Raquel. You think Trump's doing good job, bad job? You want to grade him? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I think he's doing a pretty good job. There's, you know, some things that I think he doesn't do very good at. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I watched a video where he was, you know, talking to reporters and they were asking questions. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I think he's kind of funny the yeah. way, like, <laughs> people ask him questions. Yeah, he cracks me up. For sure. But, I mean, I think he's doing the best he can do. I, I think if you are the president during this time, that's probably a lot of stress and a lot on your shoulders because you have yeah. to deal with so much. So anything you do, and the media already rips him to shreds, and they already, like, any little thing he does, like, he could blink, and they'll be like, oh, he he's racist because he blinked, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I think he's doing a pretty good job. There's still things that I, I think he's, like, somebody recently told me that he's coming after suppressors now that he, he said he had a problem with suppressors or something so i don't know we'll see what happens in the future but in the I middle in the middle of all this know. trump was saying something about suppressors that's what somebody told me that's what i like overheard oh, but i don't really okay. have information on that right that mm-hmm. much or no that's just hearsay yeah i'm not sure that i heard i don't know if uh, um roy i don't know if it was you a, a i think he said that a while ago though. a while ago yeah yeah I, I remember a comment a while ago but i haven't seen anything recent i think he's doing i guess an okay job i mean i'm kind of ambivalent about trump he's a lot better than who could have been in the white house i absolutely say that but i mean every once in a while especially on twitter or he just he just he's so i think interested in getting his own way like whenever he was taking shots at representative massey Mm -hmm. uh earlier this week i mean he was just trying to representative massey from kentucky was trying to get folks on the record as voting for or against what was literally the largest spending bill in the history of people on planet Earth, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> was, it three, was it $6 trillion? Was it $3 trillion? It was enormous, ridiculous, huge. And nobody, none of the, none of the congressmen or the senators or the congresspeople wanted to go on record having voted for or against it or, you know, the cop-out vote present. And he was just trying to get that to happen. And then there's Trump saying publicly, oh, they need to kick Massey out of the GOP. They need to kick him out of the party. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there are a whole lot of sec- – I mean, on Second Amendment issues, Massey's the dude, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's really, really strong for Second Amendment. And I think lots of times Trump just fires from the hip – without a whole lot of consideration of, of possible other ramifications of things he says or does. Hmm. I think that what a lot of people don't realize is that Trump is somewhere in the middle of being a Republican or a Democrat. I don't, I don't think he's either one. Yeah, I, I would say he's somewhere in the middle of that. Um, he's a Trumpian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's all about Trump. He's also a New Yorker, which, I, which is what I credit for his combative... Uh, <laughs> approach to governing <laughs> which i i always understand it it makes me laugh because that's new york you say something about me i'm gonna say something about you, you why know? shouldn't he uh, yeah not, hey he, listen, he is funny uh, every, you know? yeah everyone People can do what they want to do go ahead Walt, right. will attack him and ask him questions and then he'll just be like He'll be like, that's, that's a stupid question, or he'll say, that's a rude question, next, yeah. and then just move on. Yeah. I was rolling around when he called a, rep- a reporter, asked him a question that, uh, <laughs> like, you know, he's, he always says snarky, and he goes, you're just a cutie pie, is a dude. <laughs> yeah, you're such yeah, a cutie pie. Let me translate, well, that means that. you're a dick. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go back and look up the cutie pie thing. But I, I think at the end of the day, di- like, I, I get it. I, everyone's different. Everyone has a different style a way of, of being the president or whatever. And, and so right now we got Trump, he's the president. This is how he reacts to things. It doesn't really bother me personally that he reacts like that because you know the, the alternative, because basically every day he's coming out here, which we haven't seen in a long time. I can't remember the last time that a president had to literally come out every single day and do a press conference. He doesn't conference. have to. Yeah. He doesn't have to. I mean, um, he could be have his he could have his people talking for him, you yeah. know. I mean, he could have Pence talking for him. Right. You know? So he he is coming out every day, and then every day those reporters are just lined up there 
like ready to go in to, to go in with the questions and uh, to get really super conspiracy theory with you guys. I was telling Lola that I noticed this the other day. Most of the reporters are people of color and female. Sure. And I'm sure that you know that's, like, that's to 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 that, set up good news like, oh, look at how he went after look this how he black, treats woman. That black woman. Yeah. Or this <laughs> black guy or, you know, whatever it is. So I get all of that. And if you have to face that every day. I think I would have that same attitude. Like, if you keep pushing me, I'm going to push back till you realize, like, oh. And you can kind of see it in the way that they're interacting with him. They're doing their jobs and coming out with those stupid questions. And Because, so, really, I think everyone, and this is what's happening, why his approval rating's going up. Because the regular <laughs> Americans looking at this, we're looking at those press conferences because we want to get info. I don't right, want to hear. Right. I don't want to hear the gotcha stuff and oh, you said this and parsing what you call the virus right, or right. whatever. I don't want to hear that. Tell me pertinent right. things. How long are we going to have to go through this? You know what exactly is happening? So they do that, and he hits them, and you can see from their reaction they don't like that job, and that I think is how you have to deal with a situation like this where you have to go up there every day, and these guys are going to try to hit you. And I'm not trying to defend Trump either. I'm kind of like you said, Roy, I'm kind of in the middle with Trump because to me, he he's in the middle of everything. I don't really see him as a dyed in the wool gun guy. I don't see him as a Republican or a Democrat. Really. Right now, right now, the gun thing, I hate to say this, doesn't matter. <laughs> the gun thing doesn't matter at all right now. Mm-hmm. And what, what, what do you on, mean by it'll that? Be on his, it, it'll be on his shoulders when 100,000 people die. Mm-hmm. It won't be on anybody else's shoulders. Nobody will. Nobody will be talking about guns when when your granny's dead or your or your or your best friend dies because of the coronavirus. It'll be mm-hmm. Trump's fault. Yeah. Because at, he didn't do this or he didn't do that. Yeah. At Watch. The, That's what always happens. No, I understand that. Yeah. At the same you know? time. At the same time, you know, I would say just like if we go back to what happened in in uh, Katrina, the government can't tell you whether or not you have the right to the Second Amendment. But this is not. I'm. This, I'm so glad. Is, sorry. Go ahead. No, go. no, I just want to say I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because the whole Katrina situation, that was a really bad situation where they, they locked everyone down. They weren't letting anybody leave the mm-hmm. city mm-hmm. and they confiscated all their guns. So it was mm-hmm. a terrible. Just because of that example right there, I don't trust anything that they tell me to do or anything. Right. I, I believe that, you know, the coronavirus is very dangerous and stuff, but mm-hmm. the government, I think, is just can be just as dangerous as anything yeah. else. Can we can, go ahead, Roy? Go ahead, Roy. I know you have. Oh, some. No, I was just going to say. I was going to say. I think actually, coronavirus is in some ways bringing guns more to the forefront. And the, the specific right. thing I want to reference is something I shared on my Facebook page earlier. Even the frickin' the New Yorker magazine <laughs> ran an article today mm-hmm. about first-time gun buyers, specifically in 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 very left-wing. I believe it's uh, mm-hmm. Seattle. Mm-hmm. Portland. I'd have to go back and read the article again. It's somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, it, it was it was an interesting little piece about all the folks who are getting, like Raquel, like you were talking about with Katrina, getting their wake up call that hey, uh, the government's not gonna be able to protect us. Like Hank, you were talking earlier about, and, and I think Walter was too. Uh, there have been locations where uh, offenders in custody in jail have been released right yeah that's thank mm-hmm. and uh, lots of police departments major huge police departments have issued statements saying hey you know we're not going to answer calls about burglary we're not going to answer calls about robbery we're not going to answer calls about auto theft we're not going to answer calls about vandalism you know breaking and entering blah 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 make the list of all the things they're not going to oh, arrest basically your everyday crime I'm, yeah I'm if, gonna, as long I'm as it's, it's not like rape or murder they're, they're not coming right um and I think that combined, and there've even been I've seen stories where police departments have reported like half of their half of their officers down with coronavirus. Folks are having this, oh wait, I am on my own type moment. <laughs> the cavalry ain't coming. They just told me they're not coming, and then they also they told me that uh, they're releasing a bunch of dangerous dudes back into society because they mm-hmm. can't do anything with them right now. Yeah, and who yeah. knows when those dudes are ever going? First of all, this is going for a month. So you have these guys who right. are in that are being released. Okay, I know there's there's always someone in prison that doesn't deserve to be there, and I'm saying that seriously. Okay, but you're releasing a bunch of people um, because you don't know how to handle them. You don't know how to deal with them. They're in 
the the close quarters like Walter is saying at the same time they're criminals at the same time the corrections officers or whatever it is that's controlling those guys they're getting sick those guys are going out back into the population Mm -hmm. you know um, and this is getting and extended. Getting the that they can steal as much stuff as they want to, and the, the cops, cops yeah. are not coming. Yeah. Well, I, but, yeah. Well, I, I don't get the thing about the police departments publicly saying, "Oh, we're not coming out." There, there mean, been at least there was a a a, a leaked memo from Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and then there was another another major PD. I saw the story like t- uh, two days ago that made the list of things that they're just not going to answer calls for anymore. Yeah. At and least. Well, no, I, think, not, I think them saying. The Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Raquel. Uh, I was just saying, like, what's on the list? What exactly are they not? Yeah. What are the okay. crimes? Okay. Yeah. Also, I think the that police department saying this is, um, yeah. to me, very close to terroristic statements. Okay. I think it's just you're you're just adding more drama pressure right. to, 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 to folks by t- by talking about this crap. You know. You know. all. This might be a blessing in disguise, though, because it might make the whole world, or at least maybe the United States, more pro-gun. Yeah, I think that's maybe what Roy's like, saying. You know? That's Yeah, well, that's the point yeah. Roy's making here. I think that's true. All these people who are going out there and trying to buy guns right now, in most cases buying guns and ammo right now, after this, they're not... First of all, if you're new to the gun world and you don't know this, if you buy that stuff, you cannot return it and get your money back. <laughs> Doesn't no, work. I got like a that. question. I got a, I got a question for Roy though. Mm-hmm. You mentioned yeah. the New Yorker magazine, right? Right, 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 why, right, right. Why did they have to interview some people in Washington State? Why didn't they just stay right in New York, where the I same have, kind of? I would I would assume that the New Yorker may have uh, stringers and correspondents of people who contract <laughs> right for them all over the country, mm-hmm. okay. and that may just be happen to be where that person was from. Let's see here, Philadelphia. Okay, okay, okay. This is from two weeks ago. Philadelphia police to delay arrest for some nonviolent crimes. Let's see here. Internal yeah. memo re- released by the Philadelphia Inquirer. Dallas Fort Worth did the Look, same thing. Enough. I saw Coleo Noir made a video on that. Yeah, that's what um, the, I heard about but, the Dallas Fort Worth police saying they weren't coming out yeah. for minor crimes. Yeah. The point right, here is: right. is why are you saying this? Yeah. Why, why do you have to put it publicly? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. That is like that's but, like Brickell's announcement of the purge, basically. Right. Yeah. You know. Pretty right. much. <laughs> you know. So if I so if they're not going after nonviolent crime, why did that preacher get arrested? Yeah. Well. You know. Yeah, I, Wasn't I that nonviolent? Here's what I think. I didn't think when everyone was mad about the kids here in Florida being out on the beaches partying. At the end of the day, this is your right. Like we. You either believe, you have to believe whatever you believe through all weather. This is my opinion. So I, I don't, I think that if people, you know, if, especially if you're an adult, right? I know mm-hmm. everyone could debate what's an adult, but you have the right to make these decisions, even if it's detrimental to you, everyone's voluntarily going into that. Now, when you get sick or whatever, do we have to take care of you? No, no we don't have to take care of you. Of course they do. They won't turn you yeah. away. Come on. We don't have to take care of you. If you but want you, to do it, you we have, have to take choice, care of you. Know, like, emergency room, yeah, I, you do, they do, yeah. I've been staying home because it's my choice because I don't want to get sick. But at the same time, that's my choice, you know? Yeah. Like, if I if I go out there and I start touching a bunch of stuff and going to the bar and licking doorknobs, I should know that... Yeah. The <laughs> next... I was yeah. going to say so something. Girl, if you start licking stop. doorknobs, take some video, <laughs> I, Okay, that's exactly <laughs> what I just told myself. Don't say, Walter. I almost video, said please. that, and my brain said, don't say this. <laughs> Why not? Come on, man. Everybody else does, right? Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.